There's a knot that has become quite popular in recent years thanks to a chap called Ray Mears who brought it back to the world uh, from Siberian herdsmen that he spent some time with in northern Russia. And uh, there he was in the, this very cold area of the world and they showed him this really useful knot. Uh, it's now known as the Siberian Hitch although there's also the Evenk knot. I think the Evenk might be the name of the people that he learned it from. And uh, what you do is you get a bit of rope and you put it round a thing, say a tree or whatever. In this case, it's going to be my foot, but, but imagine it as a tree. And you attach one end to a reindeer or whatever it is that you're trying to tie up. And then you have your hands covered in, in gloves and thick mittens and so forth. And you do this magical thing. You go, hey, how, hey, how, like that. And the knot is tied. And then you pull on that end and tighten it against the tree or my foot in this case. And uh, then the reindeer can pull as hard as it likes. It's not going to get away. And then you pull and it's very easy to just grab this, even if you've got thick mittens on. And you can untie your reindeer by giving it a pull and it all comes undone again. Yes, it's like a high woman's knot or whatever. Uh, it's a quick release knot and it's a, it's a very nice one and it's a very nice way of tying it and I will be showing you that way of tying it in more detail later on, don't worry. Uh, but there are many videos uh, and uh, descriptions of this knot online and they all have this cargo cult mentality. Um, they say, oh, you, you wave your arms around in this special way and then boom, the knot's done. Well, yeah, that's great. Um, but it doesn't really give you a deep understanding of what it is you're actually tying. Uh, this is actually quite a conventional and, sim and simple knot, but it makes it seem magical. And will you remember, in 18 months' time, uh, even if you've watched one of these videos, and even if you've tied the knot, you've learned the, the, the hand movement, in 18 months' time, will you remember it? exactly how you did it. Oh, I think you sort of wrapped it round and then twiddled and through and then you pulled something through somewhere and oh, I can't remember. You won't be able to reconstruct the knot from an imperfect memory. But if you have a deep understanding of what the knot actually is, then you will be able to reconstruct it. And even if you don't tie it in such an efficient way, the knot will be yours. So what I intend to do is uh, break this knot down in what to some of you will be frankly insulting detail. I'm going to start with really basic stuff about knots. So if you uh, know, already know quite a lot about knots you may want to fast forward a bit. So uh, what is the simplest knot possible? Well um, if you take a bit of rope and, and then uh, loop it round a few times and then, then twist it and then fold it onto itself and then maybe wrap something around it, you haven't tied a knot. That's not a knot, that just all comes undone again. You haven't tied a knot until you've closed it. So you've created a loop and until you actually put something through that loop, it doesn't become a knot. Now this is the simplest knot possible, the overhand knot. It's not actually a very good knot, but it's, it's a simple starting point. So it's a loop with something put through it. You create a loop, you put the end through the loop and there's the, pre the hey presto, you've got a knot. But it's not a slip knot. So instead of closing it with the end the free end going through the loop, what if you passed a bite, that is to say a long narrow section of the rope which, which comes doubles back on itself, what if you pass that through instead, so you're putting the bite through, then you're leaving an escape route. So if I pull this tight, um, this is the end which I didn't actually pass through the knot. So if I pull that bit of that bite that closed the loop, that created the knot, is pulled back the way it came and bing! And that's how all slip knots work. So you create a knot of some sort but you leave an escape route by not passing the end all the way through and instead passing a bite, a loop that goes through. Now a slightly better knot than the overhand knot is the figure of eight knot. And the figure of eight knot looks like that, okay, and you can probably see why that's called a figure of eight knot. It looks a bit like an eight. It's worth getting to know this shape, getting very familiar with it, because it is the basis for an awful lot of other knots. Now, you can, of course, tie a slipped version of this by, instead of closing it with the end going through, you pass a bite through like that, and then you end up with a slipped figure of eight. So if I pull that tight, I didn't do that very well. There we go. Um, I've got a slipped figure of eight and again I can release it thus. So how do we tie a figure of eight knot? Well a figure of eight knot is actually very similar to the overhand but you've just got instead of 180 twist you've got a 360 twist. So let me show you that again. So I've got a bite, I twist it once, that's 180 degrees, and that creates 
a loop just like for the overhand knot. But if I twist it again, so that's 360, now if I put the end through, I've got a figure of eight knot. So a figure of eight knot is a loop with a full 360 twist in it instead of just a 180, which is what you get for the, uh, the overhand knot. So we know what uh, a slipped figure of eight is now. So what if I tied a slipped figure of eight by twisting a bite twice, putting the end through, and that's quite, uh, by the way, that's actually a very good way to, to learn to tie a figure of eight knot, twist a bite twice and pass the end through, much better than most of the ways you see in books. Um, and before I uh, close this, before I pull it tight, what if I were to pass the standing end around a thing like a tree or my foot and then thread it through this knot? So I thread it through like that. And this will take some while with a, a long length of rope. But then when I pulled it tight, then I could tighten the whole thing onto the tree, or in this case my foot, and I've got it. That's the knot. And if I then pull this, it releases. Terrific. Okay, so what we've got is a figure of eight knot slipped with the standing end passed through it. So now let's go to the method for tying the Venk, the Siberian hitch. So you've got the two pieces of rope in your hand. This one goes to the reindeer. Okay, with the thumb of your left hand, you just hold that ready, okay? We'll be using that later. Then with this hand, you wrap it round once. Now, why do you wrap? Why do you do that? Why do you wrap round once? Well, what you've done is you've just created a single loop. That's it, it's one way to create a single loop. So if I take, make a bite and twist it half like that, that's the same as that. That's all that is. Okay, so now I'm going to twist, whoops, now I'm going to twist this like that. So I'm, I'm bringing the, uh, the palm of my hand down away from me and up. Okay, what does that do? Well, all that does is put an extra twist in this. So I have a bite. I twist it twice and I'm ready to tie my figure of eight knot, remember? So I have a single loop and now by just, by just twisting it once more, by just doing that, I'm putting another 180 degrees of twist in. Okay, so now there's a 360 degree of twist here. So there's a single loop and there's the 360 degree loop. Okay, so back to here. Boom, je pars. I've now got 360 degrees of twist. Now, if I pull this, which is the free end, through the loop like that, then I've created a slipped figure of eight. But I haven't captured this. So what I do is, as I twist, I bring my hand over the standing end, which is attached to the reindeer, like that. So then when I grab the free end and pull it through, it captures the standing end. Okay. And the nice thing about this, another nice thing about this knot is that pulling on this loop here, which is where you have your hand anyway, is a very good way to tighten it. And now if you pull on this end, it will tighten onto the tree or in this case, my foot. And then with your mittened hand, you can release it. So to tie, the event, the Siberian hitch, hey ho, hey jump, done. Okay, so you can call it a, 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 a Siberian hitch if you want like, you can call it an event knot, or you could call it a slipped figure of eight with a captured standing end. Goodbye. So here are the knots again, but this time viewed as if you were yourself tying them. Now, if you're the sort of person who can somehow manage to put the end in the wrong way round, just remember it goes over, under, over, under, alternating. So if, as here, the last thing the free end does is go under the standing end, then the next thing it will do is go over the next piece of rope that it encounters. Uh, obviously, if it was going over, then it goes under. You just alternate, whichever way, just, just alternate. And there's a figure of eight knot. Okay, so same thing again, only this time, leaving quite a long free end, we'll put in 
the 360 twist and we'll put in a byte through that loop. And so this will become a slipped version of the figure of eight knot. Is it tight? Don't pull on the free end at this point, but as soon as you want to release, pull on the free end and bing, done. So here we go, the Avenk knot, the Siberian hitch. Wrap it around your hand and then bring it over and putting in the extra twist there, then reach through, get the free end. You need plenty of length on the free end to make this easy and then just pull on the loop and it will tighten. And then pull on the reindeer end or standing end and it will tighten onto the tree or foot as here. And then even with thick mittens on, it's easy to release your reindeer. Ah!